The last line of the gospel today says that we are to be perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect. And we'd just like to reflect on that a little bit. I think one of the, who knows, we won't know until the end of time, but it could be the case that the worst thing going on in our world is not in fact the things that are being done, the acts of evil and violence. It could be that when we get to heaven, we'll look back and realize and recognize that the worst thing happening on earth is the things that we're not doing. The sins of omission. Right? The things that we talk about at the very beginning of Mass, the things that I have done and the things that I have failed to do. Right? I think we could get to heaven someday and look back and realize that that's the greater problem than the things that are being done. We have this, again, this call in the gospel to be perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect. About a month ago, I spoke at a men's conference in Phoenix, and the keynote speaker uh, was a person who's worked in a lot of international uh, different, um, you know, working with, with different governments and so forth all over the world on peace. And he, his talk, his keynote address was to this Catholic men's conference was on magnanimity, which you might already be tempted to fall asleep. Magnanimity just means greatness, striving for greatness, right? Magnanimity is actually a virtue according to the church, and a virtue is just the sense that it's a muscle, a thing that if we work at it, it gets stronger. And it's a good thing, a thing that we should be working at, right? Something that we should be developing. Lots of different virtues that are out there. The church lists this striving for greatness as being one of those muscles that we should be developing. A striving for of the soul for greatness, that which obviously is great in the eyes of God. We should want to work and be working for that which is great in the eyes of God. It's something that we, it's a way and an attitude and an approach to all the other virtues, all the other things that I do, day in and day out, small things, big things, things that no one will ever see, a striving for greatness in that, right? That's the virtue of magnanimity, and it's a key, right? Because I think, again, it's in that gospel call to be perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect. I think it's, there's a, there's a, a, a confidence in it, confidence coming from the word with faith, Right? The confidence in the fact that God will sustain me and will help me achieve greatness in his eyes if I work with him, if I exercise this striving for greatness in all that I do. Right? So wherever we're at, whatever place we've been planted, we're called by God to strive for this, to strive to be great. And I think again, one of the things that when we talk about virtues in the church, these muscles, these things that if we work at them, we get better at them, right? The church talks about them oftentimes and holds them up and, and shows us that they, they really, there's two extremes that are on either end that we should avoid, and in the middle we find the virtue, right? So when we think about this, this call to strive for great things in the eyes of God, the church puts up there that there are two things that lie at the poles that we should avoid, right? And of course, one of them I think we could probably very easily identify, maybe both, but the one is pride, right? Vainglory, taking pride and, and an unrealistic uh, joy in the gifts that I have or thinking that I have things or have done things that deserve praise or whatever that, that aren't actually there. Right? And many, we, we know, okay, I can't, I, I need to watch out for pride. I don't think anybody in here tonight thinks, doesn't know that. Right? We know we have to watch out for pride. Right? And so the other temptation, though, the other, the opposite, or the, the, the pull of it is sloth or laziness. Right? Sort of m mediocrity. A lack of confidence in one's abilities to be good, to be a person of virtue and strength. 
It's the person in the, in the gospel who buries the one gold coin that he was given. He buries it in the ground. He doesn't believe that it can do anything. He doesn't believe that it's good. Right? St. Thomas describes that. St. Thomas Aquinas, one of the great saints, talks about that as a smallness of soul. Right? Like a sort of not living up to one's gifts. And he even says, St. Thomas Aquinas, the great moral teacher on all these things, talks in the church. It says, that's even worse than pride. Right? But wherever we want to, we, we shouldn't be either one. We shouldn't be proud, falling into the sin of pride. Right? But we also, of course, we know we shouldn't be lazy and bury our gifts and talents. Okay, so the problem, and I think, both, again, I think we know both of those things. I think we know we shouldn't be prideful and we shouldn't be people who are lazy and not doing anything. But here's the problem, is that I think a lot of times we think that the middle road is the safe one, which is me mediocrity. I won't be too proud. I won't be really lazy. I'll just kind of settle for the middle. The problem is, is that in the eyes of the church, the virtue isn't so much between these two opposites as the fact that it is above both. It's over all of it. So, I need to not just say I'm going to find the middle road between pride and laziness. I need to say I want to strive for greatness. That's what God is asking me to do. To be perfect. As our Heavenly Father is perfect. A couple of things that St. Thomas says are, I think, are threats to this. Striving for greatness, not just being mediocre, not just trying to find the average between pride and laziness. He says one of the struggles with it is that many people don't know that they're called to great things. And I think that's certainly the case. I think, again, most of us think that the Christian way is the quiet way in the middle that doesn't have any attention and all of those kinds of things. But tonight's gospel corrects that, that notion, right? It tells us, no, we are called to great things. We're called to be perfect as, as the Father is perfect. A second struggle or, or problem that keeps us sometimes from striving for great things in our life, in our spiritual life and otherwise, is a fear of failure. And we all know that. So because I'm, a, I'm afraid that, well, I might get burned. If I try to be great, I might fall into pride. If I try to be great, I might miss the goal that I'm striving for, right? So there's that fear that I might fail, that I might embarrass myself, that I might draw attention to myself or whatever it is, so I'm going to again settle for mediocrity. I think it's important also then to note that when we're talking about this, striving for good, great things in the eyes of God, it doesn't have anything to do with fame or attention. Striving for great things in the eyes of God might bring fame or attention, but usually it doesn't. And usually the things that our world bestows fame and attention on are precisely on things that are not striving for greatness in the eyes of God. So we're not saying that we're striving for greatness in that way. We're, we want God to know that it is good and great. This can be achieved, right? Like, simultaneously, it, it can be almost unseen by the larger world, the things that we're doing, the great things that we're doing as a parent, as a student, as a child, as an adult, wherever we're at, wherever we're planted. A, a person striving to be the best mother or father for their children. I was a janitor in a hospital when I was in high school and also worked in the food service line. I saw lots of really ordinary people and worked with them and was friends with them who were doing great things and striving to be great at their little place that they had been planted by God, and they were making a difference in the world, out well outside the spotlight. Pope Francis once said that to be holy does not require being a bishop, a priest, or a monk, or a nun. He said we are frequently tempted to think that holiness is only for those who can withdraw from ordinary affairs and spend most of their time in prayer. That's not the case. He said we are called to be holy by living our lives with love and bearing witness in everything we do, wherever we find ourselves. We are called to be perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect. And I would say that I think that hearing that call makes faith fun. It makes our Catholic faith an adventure. 
It means that there's danger, but that there's also this really high call that we've been given. And that we can fail. Or we can succeed. But either way, we're called to great things. And I think for many of our young people, when they think of their Catholic faith, they don't hear that notion. That they're called to greatness. That they're called to be a hero in the eyes of God. That they're called to be perfect. That awakens in us a spirit, hopefully, that says, I want to do that. I want to strive for that. I want to be a saint. This week we start Lent on Wednesday. It's a season I think that a lot of people still feel drawn to. We'll see a 500% increase in our DePaul students on Wednesday. 500%. We normally see about 80 students at Mass on the weekends, and we'll see 400 of them on Wednesday. Right? People are drawn to the season of Lent because it's a challenge. And not all of them will make it. And we'll see a big drop off on the first Sunday of Lent. But there's a striving that's involved that it attracts people. And it should attract us. It always, striving, the striving for greatness always involves that, right? A, a, a reaching out for something, an intentionality. It never, greatness in the spiritual life never happens on accident. Right? No one was ever accidentally a sin. And so in Lent, I think a lot of us see an opportunity to stop settling for mediocrity. To stop settling for a mediocre life of faith. Let your soul this Lent and always stretch out for the great things. The things of the saints. And become a saint. Be perfect as your Heavenly Father is perfect.